Welcome to another episode of Design on Purpose, the Wordplay Studio podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe for all you YouTubers out there. And if you're listening on Spotify too, um, yeah, give us a follow. Everything helps, you know, and, um, and leave a review. Don't be stingy. Yeah, leave a review. <laughs> Don't be stingy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, and that's exactly right because we have great people on this podcast like Mason today. So welcome to the podcast. Thanks. It's so good to be here. Yeah. Lobster Shack. Yeah, so Thanks so much for coming. Yeah. I'm just like, a, you know, we just kind of hit you up the other the other week and we're like, all right, let's try and get Mason here. And here you are. Here we are. No, it's it's fun. I mean, there's there's, defi- there's definitely something interesting and, and unique about the way you're approaching your pod and it's been affirmed. I've been just sitting here looking around at all the, 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 the meaning and purpose <laughs> riddled paraphernalia that you've got around the place. And every time I ask about something, it's got a little story. And so I really, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Well, we've kind of, we've kind of, um, <laughs> we've kind of met you halfway with the, with the brand and the symbology, you know, we've got our, we've got our best dress on today. Our singlets on and yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to have the classic Mason Taylor you know, uh, what do you call it? Like blue, uh, uh, navy blue, but, uh, you know, I've gotten to the point where I've had the idea for this business long enough that I'm like, I can see what's the name of the woman, the, um, the eat, love, pray, love woman. Oh, the, I don't know. I don't she's know got either. the book around, um, around big ideas or something like okay. that. And she talks about, you know, the ideas like big magic, I think it's called. Yes. Um, it might be a different person. I have no idea whether she did eat, pray, love. I'm so sorry if they got like med- mega fans who were like <laughs> waving their fists at me now, <laughs> right now. But you know, they're not, the ideas hovering them just because you're having a, you know, it doesn't mean it's yours necessarily. And doesn't mean you need to do it right now, but the idea of my singlet, idea um, not that it's that revolutionary but you know i'm getting to the point where it's been hovering around long enough that I, it either needs to be taken by someone else so for me if there's anyone out there that's got like a rad little fashion you know thing going on and they're looking for a uh, medium successful entrepreneur <laughs> that has a m- very amateur kind of presence on the comedy scene and is somewhat okay at health educating as your front man for the wife meter that's an <laughs> organic um yeah organic non-toxic color hemp blue singlet um oh, just hit, hit me up because i'm up for that collab because i'm too busy and um, lazy to do it myself there you go there's okay. a shout out well, I think I'll be a customer and uh, we're, we're all about being our own customers. You know, that's what, what great businesses are, right? You know, something that you're, you know, you're doing yourself anyway. Just, uh, you know, keep it going. Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> being your own customer. That's a, it's an interesting one that, because I've been thinking about purpose. I've even just sitting here, I've been thinking a lot. I've been trying to noodle with the idea of purpose myself mm-hmm. recently and there's, massive businesses that talk about purpose and then there's kind of small to medium sized businesses that are you know a little bit maybe a little bit closer to the ground in terms of feeling and thinking about purpose and in terms of being your own customer that's something that really keeps it close to home and I mean for me it's a little a bit easier because I've got a product-based business I'm not servicing the entire world but how do you remain your own customer when you're like a huge company? And it's like I've kind of staved off investment mm. and selling any of the business or allowing anyone to have any anything to do with my business because I'm so picky about who I – not like I, I, I do business with a lot of people, you know, just like – but yeah. it's I'm really picky about who I kind of – really you know who I really admire mm. and as and I and I watch that about myself because I you know I think there's a lot of people who probably don't know me who are a customer but there's there's other people who you know like myself and like my you know team who are like a super frother customer yeah, yeah. we and the only reason that that's possible is because I keep it really close I keep it really close to home and I'm really conscientious with everything I do so I'm like in terms of what type of customer are you like an a-grade customer that's a super spreader of the business or are you a (laughs) b-grade customer who's just pretty good and likes the product but you actually are just buying the product versus the steak versus are you buying the sizzle because in terms of super fees like I've got people who get it you know, yeah. who are like, yeah, it's mushrooms and it's herbs and there's a little bit of the Dow stuff, but you know, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, so like, and that's, I just kind of all they can get, but there's people that realize that, you know, in 50 years time, it'll probably would have evolved so far beyond in terms of just being yeah. a mushroom business or adapted in business. And that maybe that doesn't even exist. 
at all. Maybe that's a small yeah. part of the business and th- that's the type of customer I like. And then the C-grade customers, yeah. they're the ones that are like, I don't even know whether you're going to be able to hang on to this ride. Maybe we can coach you to become a B-grade customer. So which type of customer are you? Are you? Yes, that's what I, yeah. I think a lot of people, when they start scaling their businesses and start importing ideas of purpose, are bullshitting themselves and they're going, I'm still a customer, but it's like, what type of customer? Mm. Are yeah, you a B-grade customer? Because yeah. 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 That, that is something that really fascinates fascinates us you know yeah. it's like scaling like scaling a business there's our whole thing around the lobster you know because a lobster sheds its shell and it's and it's in a continuous process you know it outgrows the shell got to design a new one you know and it's continuous it goes on forever and it's like how do you maintain how do you maintain the purpose um, while you scale and, and maintain the integrity of, of how you started in the first place I imagine that's something so Difficult to do, right? Mm. Uh, so I've been, bear with me in this because this is like a really fresh idea for me. So before we go in, like we'll talk, like I'll just bring in, you know, f- behind my business, I like my leaning post is, or maybe divot that connects me yeah. to something is the Taoist lineage. And so in terms of I'm not able to just cut adaptogenic medicinal mushrooms from ancient mm. usage and then just sell them in in the current, you know, just like, and, and like scalpel them out. And, yeah. and like, I've got a whole web of connection of philosophy there that I choose to continue to walk with. So it binds me to some, it binds me to the reasons why these herbs were revered It binds me to the real intention for people um, that are taking these herbs over, you know, 5,000 years of we know people really documenting the usage of Shazandra mm-hmm. and the other practices that have evolved around it and the way that Shazandra has helped form what people understand as like the liver wood and what mm. kind of, you know, what kind of emotions you can feel moving around the liver wood energy and the, yeah. and the roadmap of that emotion. And then that's tying back to Shazandra. And then knowing that when you grow the Shazandra in a particular way, in a particular place, it's got that, it's got that vibe of the Tao. It's got that quality. It's got that atmospheric um, impression within it that actually helps the, with the regulation of your liver wood and all the other organs. So that's like, I'm, I'm tied down, yeah, down, yeah. down there. So that's that Taoist tradition there. I don't know why I went on that, that full. <laughs> that, that. No, that's great. But it's Keep the Jing, the Jing Chi Shen. You know, the Jing is you know like literally Jing is the earth. The Chi essentially is the the humans between heaven and earth, and then mm. the Shen is that infinite universe purpose. And Jing Chi Shen is in our body, so it's that. Physical potential is the jing. It's our sexual mm-hmm. energy. It's our, you know, it's that of the earth. It's like what will go back to the earth. It's the, it's the capacity for your DNA to express itself healthily. It's, a certain, it's like sexual health. It's your, it's your knees. It's your bones. It's your marrow. It regulates the capacity for your brain to function. That's all. That's the kidney. It lives in the kidneys. That's yeah. your, that's your jing. But it is of the earth. Chi is that's what animates jing. So that's what comes in and animates humans and it moves thought and it moves so on and so forth and then it's shen like life force energy right is it is chi, is, chi is there's the chi which is the treasure and chi mm. can be cultivated and it's that which is it brings movement metabolism regulation of the body it animates the jing because otherwise you know we're just a puppet you know there mm. which is inanimate that's the jing but it's got potential and you put the chi in but hang on but that's like a that's like shakti that that's kind of similar to like shiva shakti right because Shiva, I mean, I don't know if it... Yeah. Because Shiva energy, the ma- masculine energy is kind of like, well, from my understanding, I don't know too much about it, but it's like asleep until the Shakti comes in and then it awakens and then it's like a, that's like full creativity. Well, that's like yin-yang. Yin-yang, yeah. Yeah. Which is, so this, this is not... Everything has yin-yang. So three, the treasures. Um, so when we, when we look at, I mean, I, I'm taking the real long way around to talk about um, the types of purpose and the types yes, of business. I've got more questions about that too. So, but yeah, which we're definitely, on, we're definitely yeah. landing there. there. And the, yeah. the, the direction I'm going in, I guess, is, you know, businesses 
when you start a business, humans are said to be the bridge between heaven on earth. And so we're heaven and earth. And so we're bringing that harmonious regulation connection of you know, informing the universe of what's mm-hmm. going on here on earth because it's this physical plane of potential and then bringing that which we know um, for, through our universal journey down here and it's a collaborative experience to birth whatever. And that's a very spiritual way of looking at it and it's like you can take all the spiritual conversation out of it. It does yeah. drive down to to business because business is a very interesting adventure that we that we have here and so the the, there's everything has a purpose and i know like and so like bear with me i'm going to stumble a lot normally if i'm talking about something that i know that you know i'm like i'm really familiar with i'm going to be really smooth but right now i'm going to keep on stumbling Go, go, go for it well i've been thinking a lot about why i get so I don't know, like when some people, like especially big businesses, are talking about their purpose Mm -hmm. or companies who deviate and all of a sudden they're like, I want to have a purpose, I want to be more purposeful. And I'm like, I understand that. There's a difference between, you know, just being – a money-based purpose business going mm-hmm, to like mm-hmm. a business, you know, a business that wants to plant trees or has something with a little bit more soul. But anyway, when starting a business, I was thinking about, I, when I really wanted to create a business that was, had so much of my own personal vision infused into it, rather than say, if I go into a business that where I'm like, Uh, let's just think of another example. Like I want to create a brewery one day. My brewery business is something that I want to take what the earth has and what exists. I want to take that jing and I'll put about 20% of my own intention into that, but I'm just willing to build structures and build a product Mm -hmm. based on what is there of the earth and allow the, allow the purposefulness to rise out. It's not me injecting that purposefulness yeah. in there. You're or allowing for emergence, right? I'm allowing for emergence, which is a really cool, it's a, re, it's a really cool thing to do. Now, a lot of businesses have, what because we're here to animate, a lot of businesses I find that it's the, it's the ones that are like really big and soulless. They have people just going like 100%, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to take like something yeah. like oil or we're going to take, you know, like whatever, like, you know, minerals or whatever it is. And they're not bringing any of that human regulating energy because chi is regulating yeah. and animating and bridges it to universal mm. soul. So they've like, like eight, you need at least 20%, I think, of that, like that human intention and purposeful, purposefulness weaving in there with what is the jing. And otherwise, yeah. the, the, the consciousness of the earth is beautiful and, in, and should be left on its own accord, but humans are there to interact with it and take it its own accord. So it's like when people yeah. all of a sudden start getting into, you know, drinking ayahuasca and all these things. In the beginning, it's good, but some people give away their, their own, um, they, they, stop, they stop respecting their own autonomy and their own decision-making. Yeah. And they let the plant take over. So they let the earth take over completely. And then they lose themselves in yeah, there because yeah. you sh- we shouldn't necessarily in that creation spiral, you, you know, humans have a very, you know, like have a huge purpose here and you should be engaging with that. So if you bring something to the world and it's all driven from what the, earth, you know, just like yeah, let gotcha, the earth just yeah. be whatever it you know, wants to be, it gets quite extreme, right? And yeah, yeah. otherwise just leave the earth as it is. You have interacted with it. So people are like, that's the way it should be. And it's like, then leave it alone. Yeah. Leave it alone. If you are going to start interacting with it, you need to bring a little bit of your own purposefulness and soul and conscientiousness. Mm. And, and then that meeting of worlds, and I hope everyone knows what I'm talking about with the ayahuasca on there. I, mean, I'm that, 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 I hear you 100% with that because this is something that I say a <laughs> lot. <laughs> I'm like, it just yeah. drives me mad. Like, it, it's, And I think it's it's like what you're saying is, is what I've been like realizing about it too, is it's really about the integration. You know, it's like you can do as many ceremonies as you like, but, and and that's just like lifting the hood up and like shining the torch and kind of showing you some different perspective. But if you're not integrating it, like you're saying it, bringing it down from there and bringing it into real life, then there's no point. Mm. And there's a, there's a, I know you love memes, but I did see a meme, meme about that where it's like, if you've done 200 ceremonies, 
it's clearly not working or something. Da- Dave so, Asprey. Is that, is that yeah. Dave Asprey? Yeah, she had one in my last dump and it was just like, mother, you know, the medicine, uh, please tell me what to do. And it's like, just like, you know, the full like psychedelic, but like, like expression of the, of the medicine going, stop drinking, lol. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. But, um, Back on, you know, I, I've, yeah. and, and this is, I mean, uh, ho- hopefully a lot of this is nonsensical because that's where the gold comes out of. But for myself, I have, um, because there's a lot, th- that, that union between earth and human intention is quite special. And we have, we have access mm. to say the heaven and heavenly intention, um, um, which is just virtuous ways of, of maneuvering. Like, you know, if we can bring that fusion of, you know, like if we've got that feeling of infinite love and a lot of you'll find, and this is what I've found. A lot of people may be confused in these big soulless organizations, you know, however, there's all, you know, there's, there's, there's still a a genuine desire for love and maybe there's a 5% psychopath kind of thing. And so I've been really really concerned recently about the amount of people who are saying I'm a purpose driven company versus I'm a not a purpose driven company. And rather than just like sling shit at them, I'm trying to figure out why I'm annoyed because I think everyone does have purpose. But for me in the way I don't want to teach this yeah. in the way that I, I, I'm trying to figure out why I, like what I don't understand about the process mm. of where, what the human role is and it's got a lot to do. I've been thinking about this ratio of how much in the beginning someone is just purely going on like, I have this huge from the infinite soul intention to eliminate disease and to, you know, this is where I was at at the beginning of yeah, my business, yeah. like absolute love or, you know, like all this beautiful, virtuous stuff. And then started my business with like a hundred percent my pure soul, which is too much in the sense like maybe I think I, I, I lost the interaction with the actual business entity, which is a manifestation of earth in itself to collaborate on how that was going to move forward rather than it just be the Mason Taylor show. So I had a soul and personality and emotional enmeshment at the beginning of my Mm -hmm. business and I was no differentiation or distinction. And so I think maybe having an 80% where I'm like, I'm feeling this incredible future of like elderhood emerging and, you know, yeah. and a redu- the redu- that reduction of disease and those people discovering and finding their their destiny right that's very that's very beautiful but then there's like i completely bypassed that you know say i think is a minimum 20 percent and meeting how the earth and fusing how the earth in terms of formation of process you you, you know how that utilization mm. of you know like say in my instance the herbal products all that stuff that comes up you know i'm using other aspects of the earth i'm using the i'm using fuel and using, you know, we, you know, yeah. there's there's oils being used. There's all of those earthly resources that are coming up, and, and we're interacting with it, and we're bringing that heavenly Shen intention, which is, you know, like that that love and gratitude and that connection. Um, and a lot of people, you know, obviously there's a lot of confusion in the way that some people are going about it. But who am I to judge? There's many, mm. you know, there's so many roads to Rome. The, and so I've had to go, and I think a lot of people in my world have had to do a little bit of soul retrieval from their businesses. And, really and interesting. Yeah, yeah I, like, I've been thinking about it a lot because I've gone through that. And then there's you guys, you know, obviously there's a lot of cultural change things that you guys talk about where businesses go into different phases. And there's nothing more, there's nothing, there's no bigger change I can see from when people go, oh my God, you know, I need to re- take a little bit of my personal shit or self or soul or idea of what's good back and allow mm. the business, the earth to take its shape a little bit more mm, and yeah. start having a real relationship with this business. Yeah, that's it, hey. Because, and that's what we are, we're humans, we're heaven and earth bridging. Because it's like, I mean, we talk about this a bit too, like the organisation is its own entity, it's, it's its own being essentially. So I guess that kind of, you know, matches with what you're saying. Like if you try and put your own ideas into, into it, um, you know, too early on then you kind of smother it from emergence and and allowing it to to grow into its own thing and that's definitely something that we you know we did with our business is allowed for that emergence we didn't really know what our purpose was initially when we when we started we we kind of cruise and and allowed things to show it show themselves 
we met some amazing teachers on the journey. We evolved as people and, and you know, and, and developed in different ways and skill sets mm. and mastery in, 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 in other ways. And then mm. it wasn't till like later on that the purpose kind of emerged and showed itself and well, it's articulated or yeah, yeah. And it's really about transformation and, and facilitating experiences to, you know, allow, allow a transformation and a shedding of a shell mm. to occur. And, um, and about in that process together, we're realizing our full potential, you know, it's about an exchange of learning as well through that process. So we wouldn't have got there if we if tried yeah. to come up with something. It would have lacked maturity to what to what it is to what we've come up with we've now. Got to. And there's yeah. like there's so much to unpack in what you just were talking about. Yeah. Then there's, there's so, much. so many bits. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's related to that, and that's related to that because it's like, you know, as we all know, growing an organization, the as you keep growing or with your life in general, it gets more complicated or complex, and you have to keep growing with the complexity of of it as it grows, right? And it's like, when you're talking about a, a company, it does just start as an idea or some sort of energy or, you know, whatever you want to call that on, on that level, um, which is coming through you. But then at some stage, it gets to a point of maturity where it's more than you, but you might be, you know, then you got to go through that process of kind of like decoupling yourself or like removing your identity from it. But at the same time, the culture of the organization very often, well, it, it, it always starts from the founding story, you know, and like, that's the part is, is like the magic of, and the main thing that, you know, um, you need to keep intact as you do scale. And it's like this, you know, it's, it, there's like, it's like challenge after challenge, after um, challenge, after challenge, <laughs> after challenge, after challenge, but it's like keeping that <laughs> essence. And, and another, another thing it's like, and, and what we, we, um, it's like businesses, well, purpose driven businesses to me anyway, it's like, is, something a business that's like an extension of somebody's true essence it's not their true essence because it's like like rick's saying it like becomes its own entity yeah but it's like these big organizations they're not really like like why people might lack purpose in those or the soul or, or um other words you mentioned it's like because it's not really like an extension of anyone's pure intention you know it's kind of like was this thing for this reason and then it kind of has to kind of fit into this purpose box later down the line to meet, you know, to, to kind of, yeah. to be like, oh, we need to improve culture. So let's create purpose. But it's like, without yeah. that kind of founding intention that comes from some like pure source, it's, it's, uh, it's like you're saying, it's difficult. That in terms of big business, that's what I've been thinking a lot about recently. And I, and I hope when, when, when I, when I say like bridge between heaven and earth, I mean, that word heaven is so, you know, it's so far from, Christian heaven or any kind of like organized, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. organized religion heaven. It's just, I just, I think about it a lot. I don't really think like, I'm just, uh, there's no point in me <laughs> changing the word like right now in, in this conversation. But I mean, the earth is so beautiful. You know, the earth is so incredible and the earth is so savage and the the earth is so competitive and it's everything's eating everything and everything's fighting everything mm. and when you and is that bad no is it have harmony of course is, is there something is there something like is it but is it just mindless like mindlessly like that well i don't know that that's no of course but there's like that's when I, when we say about heaven and what you bring to that you know yeah. to that competition and you have the north light of whatever it is love you have that north light you know those things that emerge from 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 infinite love or yeah. that gratitude or those other virtuous elements which are you know people would look at particular um, organizations and be like mm -hmm. well that doesn't exist at all in them and it's like yeah most of them have just risen up and represent that part of soul earth that is just like everything is just savaging everything else yeah, and every yeah. you know like and it's like it's a hugely you know look at what happens to humans when they when they start lacking immunity there are all these opportunistic organisms come in and just take you down some of them are smarter than others some of them are stupider than the others some of them are just smart and work in different ways you know some of them are those that are just like let's just destroy this thing and then just get off and find yeah. the next ride others are like let's control this parasites are coming in let's control this thing keep the parties we're going as long as we as long as we can and as above so below the business realm is the same there are certain mm. energies and 
you know, there's par- I don't see parasite as a bad thing, but there's like an opportunistic, maybe it's something you can sure. see parasitic energy in the business realm. You can see those real harmonious aspects rising up from the business realm. But where it gets interesting, when you talk about purpose, that's where humans come in and create that bridging between infinite loving purpose and the earth. Yeah. And the businesses are a lot of the earth because it is that and it's always not all the materials have come from the earth, you know, all the formations of, you know, like, you know, the, 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 the system of Taoism, you know, it has a lot of heaven and earth, but the herbs and the way we use it, that's all coming up from the earth and we're placing, you know, commodify, you know, commodifying ways to, you know, like to, you know, mm-hmm. trade routes and all that kind of stuff. But all these businesses coming out now and they're like, oh my God, I'm really, um, we're hungry for this purpose thing because they've just let themselves just run, you know, run yeah. through not fulfilling their own purpose, which is to bring these, you know, these, these, these virtuous aspects mm. of themselves. But, you know, it's been, that's been the time of life to do that. And what you guys are talking about, like the excavation, a lot of these businesses are so big that they're just, and it's the way that nature in this process works is they're just desperate for something. We just need something that kind yeah. of connects us to that love and to the, <laughs> and it, so. it's interesting that too, cause we, cause we, we work, we've worked like coming from, um, you know, the work that we do and working with large, um, corporations in the, the big four accounting firms, for example, like when we do these big co-design events there and we've done, done quite a few of those, you can see that, that, the purpose doesn't necessarily have meaning. Like it was something that was just created by the executive team and then all of a sudden people turn up to work the next day and they've got like these water bottles printed with the purpose statement. It's like, well, what, you know, what's what's that? And then there's an issue of like engagement of actually, you know, now we have this, okay, great, you have it, but like how are you actually embedding it? How are you actually getting people to rally around this? Is this something that actually everyone in the organisation is actually – you know, signing up for. And I think the earlier on you can articulate it, obviously not too early because it doesn't allow for the emergence, but that balance there and then actually building the company off that puts you in a different place because you're actually in a state where when you're talking about this competition, it's like you're not selling, you're attracting, you know, like you're working with universal law because you're putting at start point, you're, you're planting that seed of purpose and then when you apply that with a, vis- a vision of where you're headed, that's just how the universe works. It's going gonna, it's gonna to conspire to align things in your way. Um, I'm not talking about like bypassing here in terms of, yeah, yeah, the universe will, will sort it out. There's got to be work to be done and you've got to rise to the challenge. But, you know, once you have those and you're, and you're starting from the seed and you're building out, it's, it's a different scenario. Yeah. Going back, like, when you're big yeah. and, a, and and you're a big ship that's very hard to turn in the harbour, it's a lot more difficult to kind of um, strip it back and, and rethink and revisit those things because an organisation might be so far away from what it was when that thing even was, was uh, created and who are these people that – who are we now as an identity? Who are these people that are working here and what do we actually believe in because uh, – you know, it's a big, it's a big job. Well, and you can see they're awkwardly, you know, that's that hundred percent. Yeah. Just you know, just earth driven in yeah. whether it's accumulation or solving on the ground problems which were needed during a particular stage, and then they're desperately going for like, how can we scrape back and start injecting a bit of this, you know, a bit of this human intention? And you know, a lot of them are like really. They, they look stupid walking into it going, okay, cool, we'll just borrow this really virtuous intention from over here. But that's a part of the process. It's a scaffolding. We've, yeah. We kind of know what we're talking about. But, yeah, how do how would you do it appropriately? How would you do it with an actual excavation? And how do you do it, say, if you're an, account, an accounting firm and just stay close to home without jumping too far towards like, you know, the whatever like the 18 goals are which are given to us by, you know, like the big government organisations and quickly just hitch our start of that yeah. wagon. How do you actually go through, let's just allow space for that, you know, for that Shen to come through, for our human, genuine human intention to start yeah. going, well, how does this work through accounting? What 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 come what feels like a how does this accounting world or this, you know, this this I don't know, this oil harvesting world, whatever it is, yeah, what's yeah. close to home? Because that's how, you know, it's the same with how synapses are created in the brain. They're not, you know, yes, 
the vision. I know exactly what you're talking about there in terms of having that, like that, it's like capacity planning. We're in liver time. We're in you know, liver wood time in spring right now. And that is all about vision. Yep. And that vision actually does emerge and come, you know, within that realm of, mm-hmm. of you know, of heaven, within our, you know, our spirit traveling up through the universe and seeing what's possible. It's audacious yeah. and it plans appropriately. Then when you get to the when you get to the spleen of late summer, you start going, making sure that you are taking really appropriate, consistent, small steps that are having you step towards your destiny or Mm. your purpose in a way that's harmonious because a business and the humans within it has a destiny and it has a path. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's there, it's on its adventure. And I think everyone's going to discover very quickly that yes, it's a good stopgap importing a lot of the purpose from, from, you know, other organizations that are selling, you know, here, you're a business that wants purpose here, take ours. <laughs> good. It'll be a stopgap. And where I, and I think it's necessary for like massive companies because yeah. it's, you know, they, they literally, you know, it's the way the earth works. It needs to quickly, you know, put something, something filler in. Yeah. But if they stick to their realm if they you know if they stick to the domain in where they're at like some of the most you know some of the most inspiring businesses i I interact with their accounting firms when they're like they bring that energy of just locking into where we actually exist and they get out of the savior complex because that's where humans get desperate and humans within organizations who are desperate outside of their capacity wanting to go and save the world rather than actually like you know look in your backyard like your fucking accounting realm or you know the fucking realm of mining look and stay in your backyard you're gonna have to deal with your guilt and your shame and all of that shit around what you do even for me it's the same in herbal procurement you have to go and deal with that and that's what a company needs to do first and foremost and look at itself in the mirror and then as that happens over time you'll find it's less necessary necessary to import purpose mm. and you'll watch it emerge as you say you know you were talking about it's easy to do when you've got a young ish business and, and excavate and feel it's what emerges from that interaction of heaven mm. and earth you feel purposefulness come up and it's really boring because you, you don't get to feel that you're the savior for everyone and you know to feel <laughs> like you're the one that's going to save the earth but yeah that's the practice, yeah. I think. And I've been thinking about it a lot. So I'm pointing to myself yeah, yeah. here because I, you know, I, 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 I love, you know, being probably a lot to, you know, you know, most likely a lot to do with, you know, things that happened when I was a kid and compensations that I had or, you know, like, you know, all that kind of stuff that yeah. I, I quickly want to go and project. And that's what I mean. Businesses have their own shit that it's gone through because you were an abusive founder and didn't listen to the business and also didn't appropriately take the time to see what love looked like in your company. Yeah. And you were like, the business is just like, please uh, give me <laughs> cash flow, you fucking asshole. And it's like, no, we're going to do these, this, and then it's like, uh, and then like, you know, so you got to go back and like actually yeah. <laughs> work, yeah. work on that. <laughs> well, it's, it's like, Going back to like it being an extension, like, you know, your business is an extension of the founders to a degree and then it takes its own life form, but it still has that essence because like if it's a, a founder that's abusive or something like that, 10 years, 15 years down the line, like that company is going to be experiencing those symptoms of that nature and it's a reflection of that person on their own personal journey, not processing their own shit mm. and then starting a business with that shit, you know, intertwined, interwoven with the culture of it. You can imagine how many, how many, um, you know, all the, all the effects that would have throughout the organization. But it's like, it's, it's, um, there's a, there's a huge correlation there between like the people, you know, the personal growth of the founders, but the people as themselves and that correlating with the purpose, because everybody, whether, whether you're a human being or you're in a company, not having a sense of purpose is when you become extremely lost, you know, depressed, whatever. Most of us spend most of our life at work, you know, uh, that's the world we're living in right now. If you don't have a sense of purpose, like you're, you're pretty much living in some form of, of mild misery at the least, but it's not to say that purpose has to be this like earth saving thing. Cause there is like a bit of a mis uh, illusion of like a purpose has to be charitable or, uh, have some sort of that kind of result when, when 
you know, it's, it's also an energetic thing, you know, and I love this whole way, the lens that you're looking through this because it's like when you have a sense of purpose, whether it's, it's not about planting trees or whatever, but it might just be about fulfillment and happiness in some way, uh, way shape or form for an accounting firm or something or empower, empowerment or whatever. Um, that starts to create, and we've spoken about this on the pod before, it's like, you know, that's a ripple effect of energy when the world would start to become more in tune with their purpose. And it's not about this me, I'm going to save the world thing. It's actually like I am genuinely fulfilled and I contribute to this world in some way, you know, with, mm-hmm. with my, wo- with your my essence, work. Right? With my like work, you're yeah. expanding your essence through, through a medium, which is the mission of how you're going to get it done. Mm. It's not necessarily about... Uh, like you're saying, like planting trees or a charitable yeah, thing. Yeah, because people get like confused. Because we obviously talk about purpose a lot, and we, we that's one of our one of our um, you know, passions. But uh, a lot of people are like, oh, we're f- we're for p- for profit. Um, I mean, a for purpose company. Yeah. But it's like, but they're talking about it a char like a charity essentially or a non for profit. It's like no, no, yeah. no. Purpose driven is doesn't mean you have to do like non for profit. It's about. You know, it's not about that. It's not about that. It can be about that too, but it's not. That's not what we're going for. Um, you know, such a weird, weird world, isn't it? Because then right. you get distracted looking at other people who are doing things you find abhorrent, yeah. but they're purpose driven, and you've got to have trust that, you know, again, you know, like the the level of discipline that it takes to stay within what you've created and your realm. And that's the thing I watch happen to multiple people. And I've watched happen to multiple friends that they can't really, I don't know, maybe they can't reclaim enough of their soul from the business. And so they don't have enough mobility to see where that earthly manifestation wants to go in order to stay competitive and survive and, you know, do what it's, you know, to do here, adventure. and, And they look at other people's, adventures in create you know there's all kinds of things going on in the world and you find you get into an opposition you know you're opposed to other people doing that and so rather than spend time within your own creation which is again we're very spleen deficient um, people and it in order to have that discipline to stay consistent and just stick to your own lane and just make sure that you're working towards your vision and what you see as the ultimate yeah. manifestation you get distracted and quite often because you don't have enough you know you don't have enough kidney essence of like gene organs i don't know much about the organs but you mentioned spleen deficiency in relation to discipline spleen soil i mean it is um, it's it's discipline it's just that grounded nature that got you know and that's the spot where you're sitting between you know you're sitting between heaven which is the which is the shen heart liver and mm. the earth um so and which is you know lung um, lung and kidney so it's that middle that's that middle point where you can be a grounded person and, and a lot of people who don't have that ability get, you know, often because they don't have enough of that in their own kidney essence, you will yeah. get distracted off what you've created and what's come for yourself and go and try and fight other people. And then they get distracted and their creation and their exploration, which is linked with their destiny and their process, their dojo within their business, you know, gets left behind. And it's, yeah, that's... um. I mean, again, I'm I, I, like I'm not. An, I I don't think about this too. I've I thought I've been thinking about this recently. That I'm appreciating. I'm not like teaching this right now. I'm just thinking it through right now. <laughs> That's yeah. I, I just I've just did a whole heap of work on this stuff. Like a couple of weeks ago, I did this like this course with the Mana Movement, and um, Mana Movement. Yeah, with Chrissy. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, Chrissy wasn't there, but I I did the the first one, the Pathway to Freedom. Have you done that? Pathway to Freedom, what, yeah, with like them? F- yeah, it was with them, with Mana Movement, yeah. But that's one of the things they talked about was this, like, whole idea of, like, you know, big pin- big picture versus small picture. And it's like, yeah, like what you're saying. And, and, and getting stuck on the small things and losing sight of the vision. And, and when we talk about, like, complexity, you know, and your ability to respond, it's like making sure there's mechanisms in place to keep you – uh, on point, like to, to get to that vision. And it's, it's so wild, the like macro micro nature of like business as an entity Mm -hmm. and a person, because the businesses do the same thing. It's like, you can get distracted from the vision or maybe you don't even have one and you're just kind of bobbing around going at the whim of whatever's happening to you. And until you kind of get clear, you know, then you can, move forward and drive forward right when you start a business or when you go and assess this is where i've been thinking how much of the percentage of of shen of 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 like loving 
intention are you going to put in and how much are you going to leave it to be just that of the earth and salt of the earth where and the the good way to you know how much am I willing to give away of like share from the very beginning Mm. and if you're at the very beginning and you're one of those people that's like I will never give away any of this share this is all about pure this and pure it's like cool retract a little bit of your soul still good like that's where I'm at I don't want I don't want anyone touching Superfeast at the moment but it was a bit too much in the beginning where that you know that distracted me and kind of stifled me from actually having an inter- interaction um because you know it's again it all became about me yeah mm. okay whereas other businesses I'm going yeah I don't I don't mind how much you know like I know the, the vision's very clear you know it's about creating this product and it, aligning with this little this little bit of value it's got this purpose and yeah cool like I don't mind if it scales and I don't mind selling it whatever it is that's for me then that goes over yeah. into like cool like I'm gonna you know that'll be like a good 70 80 percent of earth mm. and then you know I'll bring mm. in make sure that I just balance it out with a bit of 20 percent of that soul and yeah and, and what you, what kind of when you talk about that like what kind of things are you doing at at, at super feast like how do you how do you work around that with purpose, like with your team and things like that? Is it embedded? Like, do you talk about it? Do you, do pur- you have like purpose is a funny thing? I think like I have excavated recently for like you know what's the actual purpose of this yeah. thing existing, and what did I say to myself in in the beginning? Mm-hmm. And so you know it was I'm like okay, so I was. Like I would love to contribute to the the lowering of dege- degeneration. When, when was the beginning? Sorry, eleven years ago. Eleven okay. years ago, and I was like, I'd really the disease thing really got me, yeah, and yeah. so I was like, I'd really that was literally what I poured in. And this is the thing I can deviate, and things do change. Mm-hmm. But you know, in the beginning, maybe it can a little bit more. But regardless, there is something in either. This is an entity. Like this does exist, yeah. and so if you go, if you. You know, in the beginning, you're like, oh, I can't even decide if my purpose is going to be like this or that or that. It's like, cool. You're in, you know, it's when you're in that gooey formation stage, that's probably the time that you can, you know, pivot like that. But you'd, I think even then you'd be pretty surprised if you just got look square into yourself, like dead in the mirror. You'd be like, oh, okay, I, you know, I know the feeling of this. It's just about me getting the terminology and that's the purpose. Mm-hmm. Literally why it, why it started. And, you know, for some people it's a statement. For me, it's kind of got, it's five five statements um, that lead and, and it, that leads in another direction in terms of what I think the destiny of Superfeast yeah. is. But, you know, it was, you know, it was like lowering degenerative disease, unnecessary degenerative disease, you know, as, and as that's what, that's the thing I needed to be more of a dog with a bone. Cause I was in the beginning, I was just like, I want to annihilate degenerative disease. And then I got embarrassed by that young puppy Mason statement, like business, business puppy Mason statement thinking, Oh my God, it's so naive. And you know, it's like, it's so, it's so much bigger than me and blah, blah, blah. But then I, when, when I was in China last and I was reading about types of doctors and the types of doctors that work to, yeah, yeah, that you know, I was just looking at degenerative disease, and you know, like the the the, the ultimate Taoist doctor of those doctors that dissolve karmic inflictions. Oh, wow. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, and it, and it always it was always the thing. I was like, I always love you know, with if you're a doctor, you know, cutting gallbladders out, you know what you did at the end of that day, you cut gallbladders out, you know, and you prevented that, and that's kind of the tier of doctor that's like you know responds to diseases that, are, that already exist. It's a middle, it's a middle doctor, super necessary, of course, but like. The idea of those practices and these herbs and these mushrooms and and that which is about getting into the you know into further um, formation aligned gracefulness of the way that the yin yang transforms through the mm. earth and through your body so that to you know the greatest capacity you're 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 in rhythm. Um, there is unnecessary degenerative disease and there is that disease which is a little bit more i can feel predetermined and some but some of them you can feel it's environmental and not necessary yeah. you know and we can and i and i really and i was like i have to call a spade a spade and be like that's why super feast exists and i can always feel that there's an unthanked not that i desire the thanks i think that's the whole purpose of this there's an there's a and that's the whole purpose of the herbs and where the space i'm in with with this business there's an you don't, it's not about the thanks. It's about a gratitude for the fact that, and like there's so many other um, ancient systems and that, that it's revolved around this. You don't know what you're preventing. 
You don't know what you're holding at bay. You don't, you, you know, these like these practices, physical, you know, physical practices. So you mm. don't know what you're preventing from sliding back into degeneration at any one point. And so it's like this weird gooey space. And mm. maybe there's some disease and degeneration, which is just written in the stars. And that's, your, you know, that's your challenge. And I know that for a fact. And, and others there are when you get in and you really like the rubber can really hit the road in this in this in the entirety of this system is integrating all of that which is you know your you know your ultimate intention mingling with the emotions and movement and thoughts with them you know the way that you're digesting and nourishing and generating your chi with the amount you know then with how you're managing and utilizing your bones your marrow your, you know your constitution mm-hmm. your jing like that whole interaction you can get some rubber hitting the road as the Taoist knew was where the magic came in where you are literally dissolving inflictions and it's hard and it's not it's like literally you know it's not something to aspire to necessarily because it's just like you know you're either you know you're either gonna you're doing it anyway it's to what degree and that's when perfectionism starts coming in so it was a hard one for me to really <laughs> talk about in terms of the purpose of the and the business but it is no no, no doubt it's to um, prevent unnecessary degeneration mm. and so that's the first one I kind of excavated for and saw that was there and the other was I always just thought about 80 and 90 year olds um, not you know being you know, myself, I was like, you know, be great. You know, to, to what extent, you know, who, who knows things are going to happen, but to the best of the best of my ability, I'd love to land in there to those, you know, those ages where, you know, I've had, I've had the tenacity to integrate, you know, life's lessons. I'm not real. I'm not super bitter. You know, I've got the ability to move, you know, I'm not projecting all my shit on everyone around me. And that's, that's what in Taoism, the terminology is mer- like Taoism came chasing me in, in like, dude, you know, your business needs to move over and completely interact with this earth system you know this with the with the, with the, the mm. earthly aspects of this system and and you need to walk that lineage because it matched too much with our intentions and that's why i've got you know that's why i've got a very I, you know that's like people are like why are we a Taoist business i'm like for now that's like that's the terminology and the system which has really stood up and like mm. resonated with um with the soul that i that i brought and it's a natural Taoism has its own soul it's literally a system that bridges heaven and earth um so it's interesting to work with a lineage like that but that's like the the cultivation of Shen, which is you know the your one's personality, mind, uniqueness, infinite aspect of self, which we all bring. It's the ultimate intention of this cyber herbalism and the practices and moving through life, you know, you've got to be able to have that jing, that tenacity, you know, to move through and desire more responsibility be placed on. Then you need to have the fucking tenacity to go through those massive dark nights of the soul and be that person that integrates that wisdom and not just try to be like a two minute noodle because you listen to (laughs) fucking stoic wisdom on the Tim Ferriss podcast and be like, I'm wise now. But, you know, that's unfair to Tim Ferriss. I don't say think that about him, but, you know, you know, the two minute noodle element. Um, We've got a desire to be a two minute noodle expert and have wisdom in our 30s and I've and in 20s is even more so and that's what funnily super feast is there for me to support the cultivation um of of shen um which is you know and i don't love using the word elders but it's the other one that you know some people resonate with that to facilitate and um, collaborate in the in the graduation of elders mm. um yeah. and so that that for some people that lands other people it doesn't but it's about you know it's that's, that's a hard one to have tangible, but that ties me to lineage and mm-hmm. that ties me to a map, which is all Taoism is. And then it came up, you know, like the, the when I was first on this, I was like, what is it? You know, like I was just like, what, what is it that I'm doing here? I had supplements and, you know, some superfoods. And I just couldn't stop talking about the mushrooms and herbs that I was taking. Like, it was so funny. Even when I was like selling all the superfoods and things I had in my mum's clinic, um, you know, I was talking to Grant Denyer's um, wife came, came in and um, she says he was talking to me at my mum's clinic about what she should take because Grant was had severe um, adrenal fatigue. And I was like, oh. Didn't he get like hit, hit by a month or he didn't he crash a monster truck or something well, he he raced. Had a bad accident. Yeah, he had a bad. He had the accident as well because he was racing. I thought it was smaller cars, but if it was monster trucks, that's so funny. But um, he. I don't know. Maybe I messed that up. There, he was I, doing sunrise and then doing filming and dancing, and he would then just like sleep and sleep and sleep. You listen, like I'm about to launch a podcast. He, I'm, they're about to launch a podcast, and went on their podcast and talked about it. It's into wild, and she was saying back then just how exhausted he was, and I was like. Got to go to Chinatown and go and get Dujong and and um, and Hushu Wu. And so even then, before I had the herbs, it was about. And then I was I was talking about like this is something I can give you 
right now, which is a practice and has consistency and will make a difference no matter what. And it's super approachable, you know, it's super digestible to, you know, take something, but it's, it's more than taking something. It's connected to something. And these herbs have a, a history of activating you and fully activating you. And so that's the other one in my, my purpose of, in, is, you know, walking with people on their tonic herbal journey. So the, like the, the Taoist tonic herbs is what we do. And it is a full practice. And the business is just taking that shape and formation to just be in be there to be able to walk with whoever you know not be the only one doing it just to walk with people long term as long as possible on the hundred on, on and then the, the hundred year just came in as but my my fourth more yep. internal aspect of the purpose is i've and I, and I'm, I don't know, maybe this changes, but like at least a hundred year family owned company is what I've got there that feels purposeful, but that's feels, that's the, that's the one that's emerging. I can feel the interaction. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's not true, but we're, I'm, I'm figuring out what, you know, whether that's the best thing for the business right now, that's probably where the purposefulness is, is, yeah. is getting interacted with, with the organization. And, and how have you been, how have you been, uh, I guess, exploring this process with the organization? Oh my God. I mean, just nonstop, nonstop, ever, like never, ever stopping, never, ever stopping thinking about it. Yeah. It's intense. It's the worst thing for longevity and for Jing, <laughs> but also the best in terms of like what I, I needed to grow up, you know, like, I'm like, and, and I'm, and I'm going through that process. And so in terms of conserving my Jing and not leaking my Jing and making sure that I can live as long as possible and mm -hmm. make sure that I'm, you know, like, yes, I want that. However, you're also here you've got that jing to use the jing, you know, and take the Ferrari out of the, you know, out of the garage. And so I'm thinking about it constantly. I've, I'm never, I'm never not thinking about it, you know, yeah. and in terms of what that comes out, you know, what kind of statement that comes out of, and, you know, people who are businessy minded going, you know, well, come on, what's that one word? Like when I take that through where those three things and, mm. you know, they cross over and, you know, when these two cross over, you get something and these two cross over, get something and there, what happens when all three of them cross over? And I'm like, yeah, I can feel there's an, there's a full graceful activation towards, you know, to, for someone to, you know, adventure towards their, their destiny. Yeah. And so it's like, then it's a matter of going, okay, that's like, I know the feel and it's my job to get intimate with that feeling that emerges through that interaction of heaven and Earth, and that's my job. That's what a human can do: is to feel it, explain it, noodle with it. That's the feeling, like not that. Two minute noodle. Not two minute noodles. <laughs> I'm talking like you know, from scratch, Classic from scratch noodles. in the yeah, 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 grandma that's done it thirty thousand times in her life and is a master of noodle yeah. making. Yeah. But that's, um, I mean, this is again it's the human. This is what we can do we can we can feel with our peripheral nervous system which is the liver you know the liver wood and we take in through our sense you know, for, through our senses what's happening and then that moves the liver and takes that information and is a mother to the heart and mm, the heart mm. feels how does this what 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 is this that that this actual thing that i'm feeling in pure feeling state of reality which is what the emperor mm. of the heart does and then that moves that next mothering of the um, of the heart to the spleen occurs where we land on earth and we go great that's what we're feeling what words can i put to this in my how does my intellect actually explain what i've felt mm. in a way that's practical ensuring that i'm moving towards the vision that i could feel going through back to that liver as well yeah. and then from there you move on to the lung when the lung is about feeling value what's actually valuable what do i need to cut away savagely if i want to like move towards that value mm. even further and allow it to express itself and shine and purify that which no longer needed and then that drops down to the kidney water and that's when you sit in silence and you let go of all ideologies and all things you thought you knew and thought you knew you were and then in that you face your fears because you constantly have to face your fears because you get gritty and dirty during all that time and then you move back into the liverwood um fray you know um season it, and yeah it would be so cool to do that as an exercise for the organization like have you done that like you've actually got, applied these principles in like a design process, process. Yeah. like wouldn't that be so cool yeah. nothing replicable repl yeah nothing rep replicable i guess yeah because <laughs> yeah, it's so true. yeah it's so interesting because there's so many like obviously you've been thinking about it in this way and the, like we think about it in a different 
way, but it's this like so much overlap. It's but- it's cool because mm. the other business we worked with recently was a regen or like an agroforestry space, right? Arts Akura. And ecology, yeah. And um, we just did a purpose of sabbatical with them, and there was this whole they we we used like the five principles of of um, permaculture. I think there's five or eight. Yeah, or good old Mullen laid down by the prophet Mollison. Yeah, yeah. So we, we went through these like <laughs> we used those as like the Love princi- Bill Mollison, by the way. Love it. <laughs> well, we used those as the Is he, is he still around? No, he's, he's, he's like the grandfather of permaculture, right? Yeah. It was cool because it related, you know. So like they were talking about Which is photosynthesis, you-, you know, and then we related it all about giving ideas the best opportunity to, to, to grow, you know, and, and – what does photosynthesis photosynthesis look like in a in a business context? That's really good because that was say like not necessarily downloaded by Mollison, but he was a form <laughs> potentially. But he did he did it was informed and he did respond using that wisdom which already existed mm. and put it into the formation of a new way of explaining, which yeah. is a, a system that was, you know, this is beautiful interaction between, you know, him energizing that meeting of the wild earth and like what we want to do here on, you know, that, that you can feel what's that, 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 yeah. that love it. Let's, uh, let's adventure and love and discover ourselves that heaven, the earth is like, you know, this abundance and then meeting in the middle is Bill coming and helping energize energize and facilitate that yeah. collaboration and then bringing words to it and bringing systemization to it and harmony. What's the perfect harmonization for um, permaculture between heaven and earth right now to meet the intention of what's possible mm. where humans are at? And then these guys, that's the best thing for a business to not just be pulling it out of your ass. I resisted Taoism for so long. And I'm especially when other people start talking about it, I'm like, not interesting anymore. I need to make it all up from scratch, which is (laughs) too much me. I'm not collaborating with an earth system. You know, that's like, that's the whole point of like, (laughs) this system is locked into the earth now. And then standing on the shoulders of giants for what came before, but those giants who you really know were tapped in and they've created those divots of reality. And that's like, that's the, that's where it's nice for some people. You can see you've gone to soul and to make it all up from scratch. And these are the people that share every little process they have on Instagram before they've had any kind of chance to digest it or process it or the mm. people that become business coaches before they've actually created anything bless their cotton socks and mine i've been there but them those guys it's like the, using those five principles of permaculture as a guide yeah it's, it's a not the framework it's an amazing framework it, makes sense. it relates directly to the business and like just just going back to purpose statements too because you're talking about um distilling it down and actually bringing it into the earth side of things it's like one thing we, you know, this is our purpose statement here and every word to us has like a very particular meaning and relates to some form of our story. Like, um, you, you know, like Rick's mentioned some of it together, but like the word ecstasis is in there and we came across that because <laughs> ecstasis is the process of a lobster shedding its shell, right? Like, and, and that, that took time to articulate, but when you get it, it's like everything starts to align because it's like this clear, succinct, you know, full, um, like it's just in resonance with the, like it is the purpose articulated. Right. And it's like getting it down to that, that, um, that essence, like the words, it's like, it's like a magical thing that starts to yeah, happen. Well, right? it's like spelling, it's it, a spell. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's the words that we, we choose. It's such a cool process because we're all such you know, we were like, let's be kind to ourselves. Like, you know, we're really good at what we've done so far, but you know, us humans, you know, running around, you know, we're just like, we're, you know, bless us, you know, we're such, <laughs> you know, we're just, we're stumbling our way through and we're discovering as we go along and, you know, it's, and people, it's a, it's a weird thing, your purpose statement, you know, you look back, you know, looking back at all the times I've thought about my purpose over the years. And then I'm like, oh, okay, there's that hint of familiarity again. And then, you know, finding a place that you're going to get informed in other ways yeah. as you go along. So yes, there's the five principles, but make it all about what exists already and just committing yourself. That's like a, you know, that's an 80% earth of what's there already. And then a 20% soul verse, you know, like yeah. moving it in the other way and just like, oh, I'll just leave that there as a little guide and then see what comes about. And in terms of purpose statements, I think about a lot going, okay, so 50 years, 
let's imagine, you know, I'm, I'm imagining Superfeast has evolved, you know, maybe it's still, you know, maybe it's gone full down herb, you know, like old Silk Road kind of style. Perhaps that's the direction it goes in or perhaps it's gone, you know, into like into online training or perhaps it's gone into physical spaces that integrate, you know, all the Taoist abdominal massage or it's evolved beyond Taoism in the sense that it's gone back to an essence and an integration of creating like integrated um, healing and medical centers or something like whatever it is. And I'm like, that's where I'm like, okay, that statement that's relevant now and relevant in 50 years, if it goes like fucking wild and finds, you know, it's sweet spot, you know, Mm. maybe it stops and stays where, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe in 50 years it goes, you know, you know what, it was really nice, you know, where now we're going to descend and go back to like a five person company that just, you know, pulls the levers, whatever it is, does that purpose statement still still align. And that's where I think that's what's I've been spat out in terms of thinking about what that, what those statements Mm. are as, um, at the moment, because that's kind of like, it's rattled me in a way about like how much am I, you know, I hate the word projecting, but you know, again, as I do, I've needed to retract myself back from, from super feast, you know, if I wanted to see, you know, I'm just here facilitating. I want to facilitate. I can yeah. interpret what, you know, what's coming down from the heavens and, you know, that kind of feeling, that spirit, and I can interpret what's coming up from the earth and then mm-hmm. I'm animating what goes on between them. And if I get sucked in and put so much of my, oh, and I'm feeling this and now I'm feeling that, do that instead. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of that, but I'm going to, I want to pull myself back, especially <laughs> as I realize I want to go on and do other projects yeah. as well. So, yeah, that's like... It's been, it's been funny. It's been, I'm, I'm real funny. I feel like I'm in a funny time. Oh, well, you're, <laughs> okay. you're a funny guy, apparently. <laughs> in terms of, you don't, don't you have some other interests in, in, in comedy and oh, I needed, things that was like that? For mental it? health, Jesus. I was like, I was, I was at this stage, I think we're, I don't know where we were at in, um, in lockdown. And I just kind of had taken over the back, the reins from my wife of like running the company. And I was like, Oh my God, you know, this is, this, it felt, you know, I was just like, for me, I was like, this is heavy. You know, I'm like the biggest Peter Pan. So this was my stage. I was like right in that stage where like, you know, we all like, I, I imagine everyone listening in here has watched hook at least five times. So oh, yeah. just that part where I, <laughs> you know, but- Oh my God. I mean, you know, that's like, that's, that's absolutely, that's absolutely homework. Or maybe that, (laughs) that part of say Siddhartha, if you've read Siddhartha, where you go and lose yourself, you know, like, well, for Hook, you know, you got to go and forget that innocence and you got to go forget that child innocence. You need to go through that dark night and you need to get consumed by, you know, whether it's business or just the, you know, the the, the earthly grind and yeah, all that. And so I knew that I was kind of going in to that one of those processes and I needed to go through a metamorphosis and not run away and not do the Peter Pan thing and actually go and chase a dream, you know, and that's where you got to remember your happy thoughts. So in Hook, he's like, you know, the re- what was that reason that they, they left Never Never Land, just being a perpetual child, you know, and for him, he was like, I wanted to be a father, you know, and so that forced him to leave Never Land and go into that, you know, that fucking harrowing, miserable London town and then eventually become like, you know, anyway, get lost in business and become fat and become an asshole and become a bad father like he really lost himself but you don't need you know he he'd in the story you know he'll have to go through that again and he'll have to go lose himself again but you get better and better and better at it you know for you know make sure you've got your, your vision your purpose and you've got your regulators you know it's like when you talk about businesses it's like you're heading there and things are going to happen and you're going to get influenced in certain ways make sure you've got your north star which is like that's what i the north star is what i you know use yeah. in Taoism, um in Taoist terminology in my business so you don't fall off track we say that and so during all that happening i knew i was going through that and i knew i needed i was you know i was like cool i i I know i'm gonna not need ideology so i let let go of all my health ideology at that time because i had no room for anything but the business but I was like, I just need one hobby. And one thing I had ignored, like when I was in, I mean, when I was like 17 going to the career, um, blah, blah person, whatever they're called, you know, they were like, what are you interested oh, in? The career, the career guide, advisor. advisor. What are, yeah. What are you, well, you know, what are you interested in? I was, I was like, actually like the only thing I'm interested in is comedy. Like I can only, in terms of like, I can, I don't know, I'm not particularly funny. You know, I was like back then I really, you know, I was funny with my mates. 
And they were just like, okay, that's not really a career. And they were like, you know, we kept on. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really rough. Um, it tough was, crowd. Yeah, really. Like, <laughs> really tough crowd. I bombed the very first time I tried to get up. I bombed hard, so much so that I completely deviated for the next 16 years from that. Um, but that's at the beginning, I was like, I was. I didn't want to start anything new, but I was just like, look, maybe I can just go back and, you know, just do a little stand up course because that's, you know, it was just kind of a little redemption for me to, and so that's, um, and like, you know, and, and as is my nature, I was like, okay, if I do stand up, I'm going to have to like take on becoming like, a, you know, you can compare yourself to being like a traveling stand up coming. So I had to deal with that. And then at least just now just have it as a bit of a, um, a little bit of a, uh, a hobby, but I needed it during that time. Like mm. I was going to go in one of two directions. I had someone ask me to audition for rent. And so actually like I sent in an audition <laughs> to play angel. <laughs> and so, and there, there, yeah, there I was, um, on the, on the precipice of getting a call back and, um, been, you know, just been there in my brilliant stilettos and my fabulous, you know, presence <laughs> and decided rather than go the stage, I went, the, oh I went, I gosh. went the stand up. Okay, <laughs> I'm, <so rude. laughs> I'm, just, I'm just remembering one of those videos you made, the Byron Bay's Spoof thing. Oh, yeah, that's my Sailor Moon. Oh, yes. I like haven't seen that. Byron Bay's most influential influencer, winner of the influency, four years running. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no way. <laughs> but it's like, it's cool that you do all the, like, and, you know, we're in this kind of age and era of personal brands, but, like, in terms of that being an extension of yourself, but also relating, you know, or a, a, um, a channel of creativity for yourself, but it's also... Like does how how much does that influence or or add to Superfeast? Whether it's like internally in the company, because I'd imagine like everyone would be following you that works, you know, there, right? No, um, whenever I'm hiring someone, uh-huh. I do take them onto my Instagram and make sure that they are aware. <laughs> you know what they're signing up for? <laughs> yeah, legit, legitimately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I also I also make sure because you know I do have different aspects of myself, and I have. I, I, I got really scared and kind of like seemingly blew it up, but I went too far into my health educator um, stage persona. It wasn't an online persona at that stage, but I lost myself in in that that ideology and that, yeah, I mean, just the, the kind of like, just, I don't know, just like I, I, everyone, I don't have to go into the analysis anymore, but I had to step away from being a facilitator of health education um, and just- Transformed. Yeah, I, I, and I just wanted, I just then- I, I took a step back and then really engaged with my, you know, my, my CEO, CEO, um, selfing. And then at some point I realized, um, that I was getting quite boring. And so that's what's, that's what got me moving away from health ideology and having and educating around health in any way mm. that would get people because people who are looking for health information are all, you know, for you know, and as I've been, they're they're low hanging fruit a lot of the time, yeah. and they're easy to crack out. And I'm and I like, and that's like, and that's what I found on stage. I was cracking myself out, and then creating these little, you know, creating those pockets of belief. Rather, you know, that this is a hard thing to to explain. But you were talk, you know, we were talking about what because I had an online persona. A lot of people were like, "Why are you blowing that up?" by, you know, doing these spoof videos and, you know, dressing up as May Sailor Moon and taking the piss and, you know, and like doing, you know, some, some things are pretty edgy. And at times there were, you know, some, I can't remember what I was doing. I was, I've got a, I've got a, a character called the conscious cucumber. And I was like, you know, someone was asking me what, you know, what does a conscious cucumber eat? And I can't remember. It was some fucking reel that I shared. And I was just like, you know, I just like slurp like little prana noodles and, <laughs> and I was like that. And I was like, you know, I had a piece of kingfish with me and I was like the most pure kingfish. And of course the essence of my, um, the, the essence of my beloved's yoni and like so something like that. And then the next video was me just like, just slowly like massaging and like, you know, the clit of this, this, um, kingfish. And I don't know why I did it and why I shared it. I was like, I just have to rip this right now and stop people thinking I'm one thing. It's kind of like when you stop being a vegan and you, you're slowly needing to show people that you eat meat. Like it's a big process for people. And then mm. had a couple of wholesalers been like, Oh my God, what is this? You know, I can't believe and I had to do a video on super feast going, you know, just don't follow me. If you, you know, if you, um, if you don't want to get triggered like that, cause my little, little, my whole educational piece became 
bringing bring the slipperiness so that people don't get lost in health ideology. And and then I started to actually accidentally re at the time, the first start, I was just being in your face and edgy. And mm-hmm. then I was like, the only way to do this is through humor. And then I was like, I started finding a part of myself, which I was just like, oh my gosh, like it's such a, I left that behind so long ago, like that as, as a teenager, like that, that, you know, I was just like, oh, well, you know, I've grown up and, you know, instead went traveling and doing all that kind of stuff. And I just, you know, watch a little comedy here and there. And I was like, fuck that. Like, I would love to like, I don't know what's going to come of, um, come about it, whether it's doing a couple of little skits and then eventually doing stand up and, you know, getting on stage a few times. And I'm just learning how that slowly, you know, how that slowly weaves its way in. But yeah, it's nothing more unfortunate than when someone does lose themselves in the business. And I've had a few friends I've talked to recently about this going, dude, you know, you have sacrificed parts of yourself because of this persona you're wanting to continue to mm. present because you're, you've got this role in your business. You've been possessed by your business and it is not cool being appropriate. Yeah. And I don't mean like, you know, you can do whatever you want. There's things I kind of, it's not that I, I'm like, there's things in my um, what's the wording, you know, my naiveness around, you know, my comedy that I've like shared and I reflect and go, Oh yeah, probably didn't need to do that. It's not actually that funny, but through getting up and actually doing it, I've got the reference and how to Mm. go, like, where is that sweet spot for me? Which, and that's a risk. Like people might lose customers when they're doing that, or they can just go and find somewhere off social media or, you know, somewhere to go and do it and learn it. But that fear, that's where you got to go and into the kidney winter, you know, into that kidney water and face your fear. What's going to happen? You know, that's like in Star Wars when Luke's, you know, like with, um, um, with Yoda and he has to go into the cave and face his fear yeah. and it's Darth, but then it's actually, he's the one that just turned to the dark side and he's the one behind Darth's, you know? So you got to face like, shit, I'm going to, am I going to lose my family? I'm going to lose my business. I'm going to lose respect. Mm. And you know, you go, that, that really helped me going through those, mm. um, going through those winters. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not going to be like notir- no notorious anymore. I might lose some friends in the health world. I might lose some. And it's like, it's good facing it. Easy. Just write it all out. And, and the, this, you know, like, oh yeah, there's some, truth to to that and that's like yeah cool I'll I'll acknowledge that that's absurd this is just my shit you know that informs I gotta you know work in my meditations or go you know work through that in a therapist or work with you know work in whatever way shape or form but and then eventually you know you 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 go you know you re-engage with that playfulness and that's you know you drag yourself out of Mm. being you know being that um Peter Pan, you know, Peter Pan that lost his way and he becomes Peter Panning and he forgets what it's like to be a child. And then you go back into Neverland and it's awkward as you start engaging with that, you know, integration cycle. And then you completely crack out and lose yourself in the comedy. And it's, you know, you fuck responsibility and adult. And then you remember how to bring them both together yes. and, you, and you go to live, to live would be a wonderful adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're interesting and that's the cultivation of shen uh-huh. and any point like for me i was like when i was raw foodist and um, i was getting to the point i had a, thankfully had a few people who were like you know into like western price and that kind of thing and they were just hounding me of shit that i was faring like non-funny mm-hmm. vegan memes is if you can admit to yourself that the memes that you're sharing are agenda based and not lolzy based just fuck, you know, do what you can to, to admit that. Cause that's going to show you're really boring and you're really lost in your ideology. Memes are meant to be funny, not agenda based. That's kind of like something I want to say, but that's, yeah. that's, um, more, more or less what happened to me. I was like, just like, you know, you're having little conversations with yourself in the shower and you're in a monologue. And I was just like coming up with like justifications for why, mm. you know, why I ate the way I ate. And it was, it was bland and boring and you get, you start getting fogged. Like the Shen's like a diamond that you shine throughout yeah, your, yeah. throughout your life, that heart, that infinite self. Um, and it's like, yeah, infinite love is what it's connected to, but also the personality and the uniqueness of your personality. And if you get lost outside of yourself and you get swept into an ideology, that's not yours, you, you, you start ignoring your own Shen. Therefore mm. you're not refining your Shen. Therefore it starts getting scudded up and dirty. Yeah. And you think you're doing, you know, you think you're all full of purpose because you've taken the instructions of some external dogma or some external organization or institution and you've imported and go, look at me, look at all the impact I'm having and look how interesting I am because I've got these points that make me right and you wrong and I'm fixing the world or whatever it is. Yeah. Or maybe it's the opposite where it's an identity to, you know, make yourself yeah. feel like a piece of shit. But, you know, that's if you're there, the, the, if for me, it's like, oh my God, I'm becoming, I can feel myself 
becoming one dimensional mm. and bland and boring. And that's when you're searching to justify something or you're looking to dominate someone or avoid being dominated. For me, that's how I was like, I'm going to have to change because I'm getting really bored of myself right now. And so chasing that, which is interesting or dynamic or unique, that's the cultivation of Shen. And that's when you meet pump someone who's really an elder, um, you know, not in some, you know, different word or say like, let's say someone who's really cultivated that Shen they are unfuckable with because they know who they are. They're not reacting. They've integrated all the unique aspects of themselves into some weird and wonderful, unique combination of things. And that's like, and I'm, and I'm trying to do the same very awkwardly around, you know, awkwardly biz businessman, CEO, and awkwardly, you know, my own little health education gestury kind of things without, you know, telling people to, you know, to like how not to mm -hmm. get swept up in ideology and talking about Taoism and then doing stand up comedy. I don't know where it's, you know, with like, you know, landing in a family, like it's all awkward <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, uh, but that's, that's the looking to my own backyard, you know, mm. that's the thing that I enjoy doing. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I can definitely relate to that. It's like, and, and if you weren't doing any of that, you know, you'd be letting fear stop you and fear of rejection or fear of getting judged and all these things, which are the things that it sounds like have been the key parts of your, your growth as a, as a human. Right. So. And that's the thing. I mean, liver, liver energy spring is also good for planning because some people are like, I've got all of these feelings and I got to go out and do them all right now. And it's like the liver is like the general of an army. It's like, let's actually do some capacity planning. <laughs> like, like, yeah, but how cool is that though? Like, have you, do you structure your time around these, these rhythms? Like mm, in the, in the, in the company? Cause we had a friend in here, um, Mariana and she talked to us about um, feminine business cycles and then like how she structures her business around her, her moon cycle and it was so cool and, and then she was talking about these seasons you know like having a, a, a summer winter what a spring summer autumn winter and, and now what you're talking about like mm. actually integrating that and using like you're saying like well this phase in the business we're going to do planning we're going to do, do do you do that? Yeah, there's um, you know, our, our days, you know, we start mm. on metal and then we, and then we go water, wood, fire, um, earth okay, and finish, cool. finish on earth. And we, we, we work within a four, four season cycle. And, um, you know, the, the other, the, the earth late summer is just always present. Um, and that's how we, we do our temples. We, we do our temples at the start of each season, which is our projects in terms of what we're building that mm -hmm, doesn't exist mm -hmm. within the theme of like liver wood right now and we ground that in and yeah so we we, we do and and Taoism especially you know it's it's a difficult one to land but in terms of you know chi based bodies so mostly when we're talking about men when it's a body that's like purely driven by chi are going to be more on a 24 hour, 24 hour cycle so 24 hour organ wheel is going to be very relevant but a blood driven body which is generally going to be women I found is that fascinating that i listened to that episode you posted recently about this and i was like oh my gosh it gave me a lot of Inside. I mean, especially around work environments, because, you know, you can see, you know, patriarchal, like, you know, all, you know, driven towards men kind of and say, yeah, that's a chi, there's 20 men, you know, men run on chi. It's like, you know, is it better or worse? No, it's been amazing. You see businesses like rise up and be more in the, you know, and, and be more driven by blood. It's a completely different type of business that, you know, it's like a, watching an incredible harmonization going on in the business landscape mm. right now, as well as like, there's an, an appropriate blending and mix of chi yeah, and yeah. blood. Um, you can see the, the opposite is going to have to happen in pure blood driven businesses and though but you know in terms of like when you're bleeding and in the winter you know how that's what i've been thinking a lot about like how when you got to do something anyway like but what you know what are some things we can do because ideally you're off tech and you know if you really like people like women who are really going through hectic hormonal stuff it's like the, quite often the biggest thing to address is getting in that cycle of those four phases, um, which could be five phases between bleeds or with the moon and, um, and respect the seasonality of each and, you mm -hmm. know, take on that quality of going into winter and dis, you know, and like not going to that event, you know, you, you know, not being seen, not interacting, doing work that's inward, not responding to things yeah. like, and then it goes, it goes through, through and, the cycle. And then like leveraging the things that come with that was Murray was talking about, you know, like at some stages you're more intuitive, you know, so you can do these types of activities and yeah, it's huge. whatever. It's so, so interesting. I mean, it's cookie cutter. And that's the thing, unfortunately, there's a better and worse. 
and um, you know we're the antidote kind of thing it's a, in in business right now and it's like it's all just the Dow it's all just yeah. harmonization <laughs> and you know it's like we've we've seen an explosion of masculine organizations and which are yeah. chi driven organizations because we needed never ending no you know never ending work no no cannot stop ever not very great for the <laughs> for the yeah. human resources within it you know and and the men especially cuz we need yin and the yang <laughs> and yeah. men have blood too and you know men are also need like there's an aspect mm. you know of course women are also influenced by the 24 hour organ cycle yeah. so of course men are influenced by the blood driven moon cycle yeah. and so a harmonization is going to be better for everyone and yeah it's a it's a it's funny balancing that with just you know workplace law and you know the way that it all it's all structured but it's possible and yeah that's like thankfully yeah we've got the Taoism in there to to help you know like mm. in, instruct us need to learn more about that the Taoism I haven't I haven't gone too deep into it at all but a lot of, look a lot of it you know you'll find it's just general you know it's just like a common common nature based sense yeah you know and which but a lot of it is takes on a very unique type of terminology that uniquely gets you mm -hmm. interacting with particular groups of energy in your body and gaining yeah. a relationship and then it, it's just a map at some point all the Taoist the word Taoism and all the terminology can go away and it's just you having an interaction with you know reality of you know yeah like whether they're more etheric heavenly based you know aspects and things or you know parts of yourself like your heart or whether it's things like Jing and you know Jing being you know you know or, or um or the five elements, you know, they're just all maps to just get you, get you in tune, just to get you in rhythm, just to mm -hmm. get you in harmony. And so in terms of structuring all those rhythms, yeah, that's, that's there. I, and it's, it's a, it's a funny one because I also don't want to think that I can bypass all current common business you know, like, you know, like rules as well. But it was a huge thing for me when it was 100% me. And I was just like, no rules yeah, don't rejecting apply, it. Yeah. rejecting it, you know? And I was just like, yeah. oh, this is a really poor service to super feast, to not follow maps and rhythms yeah. around business as well. So, yeah. It's important. The frameworks, like the, like the work that we do, I was explaining to you earlier upstairs is like environment and you've talked a lot about environment and you know degeneration and environment and you know processes and tools you got to have some kind of toolkit or framework to be able to take because everything's too loose you can't land you know so you got to have some way of kind of organizing things a framework to play in you know yeah like yeah you gotta yeah what are the creativity is the process of eliminating options so like the you know having the framework actually it gives you the freedom to play rather than having endless options and never getting anything done. Yeah, I mean, if you stay conceptual, which is what we do, we're interpreting mm, that mm. which is out there in the ether infinite. and bringing it down and infinite. And if we refuse to land it in to the earth because we're too scared, right? Um, then you're gonna you're not creating anything into perpetuity. And some people are there to, to uh, here to do that, but stop fucking building businesses then, you know, stop, <laughs> stop pretending. Like you are, you know, that that's what, you know, that you're creating something which is, you know, it'll have an existence within the ether for sure. But stop getting stressed out when you don't see that you catch in a balance, you know, in your, like in, yeah. within your balance sheet, because that's just not the realm you're, you're working in, you know. So mm -hmm. I go, like that's I'm kind of talking to myself. That's back in the day. I had to really have those hard conversations because you do become boring when you're at a, you watch yourself, like and you go and hang out with a couple of other business people and watch them chats and watch their rubber hitting the road, having chats and they're dynamic and they're in reality and everyone's sparking inspiration and, and, and everyone else through our ducks, nuts, rubber hitting mm -hmm. the road, fucking things that are manifested into reality. <laughs> and someone that's like, yeah, like, oh, I don't know we just don't need that and they're just like we kind of like it's just like oh fuck off like you know like if so fucking boring and you just like hearing yourself talk and i get that you have a really lovely voice and it's not to discredit the fact that you're yeah. noodling with something but you just need to stay in that etheric meditative state where you're you know you're just you know you're really considering the magnitude of what it is you're feeling but you know maybe you just need to go and marinate 
a little yeah. bit more before you come and pretend like you're really making an impact because you are making an impact in one realm but you know you just you know you just you should be looking at yourself in the mirror and realize you're going to have to get grounded into reality at some point so go and look at your own spleen energy go and get actually grounded go and look at the ideologies that you've got around health and ideologies you've got around who's bad and who's good and around capitalism and around all that yeah. money shit and go and look at it square in the eye and deal with your shit so you can get on with moving towards your destiny with harmony and actually get some creative vibes going on sounds great <laughs> that's good, i think that's a good note to, to, to end on there don't you reckon is there anything you uh want to or need to promote uh with super feast or yourself coming up that people need to know about not coming up no we're just you know here to here to walk the the tonic herbal path with you okay fantastic what about what about the and comedy have you got oh, yeah. any shows coming up no, any got plan nothing coming up at the moment um i've uh you know i, I just go I, I i'm running in and i did a couple of shows recently um local ones and then I've just kind of ran back to make sure that you know we've got a five month old and I've got a yep. lot of movement going on in the business so I'm just making sure it's still appropriate so I'll um I'll get a little bit better um on um on insta and um of of putting up when I'm getting up for a little okay. little, little, well, little little cheeky well, we'll jokey chin what wag about, what about the next it. the next uh, meme drop are they just, I don't even just know. Constant? Oh man, I never know when a meme drop is coming out. <laughs> Jesus, like it's um, some, and I and I'm always surprised because you know, and some people often say it. They're like, "Why do you have so many memes when you're? I think you're running a company, and I think you're got hobbies, and I think you have two children, and like how? And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I, I honestly don't know. And like, I remember, I remember finding them. Yeah. I remember, you know, but I'm like, I honestly, I'm like, oh god, I don't have enough. Holy shit! No, there's like forty memes here. Like, where do you store these memes? That's something I'm I'm fascinated with too. Like, do you have just like scrolling. a folder in your phone or something that you put these memes in? Just the the, the, the fold up the same folder that when I want to I remember that there was a cool photo of Leo, my son, and I want to go back and find it. It's like lost in like hundreds. Well, yeah, that's of what memes. I imagine when I imagine you open your photos on your phone. It's just screenshots of memes all the way. It's up. either that or they just channel somehow from like not even in the phone. They just come through your Instagram yeah. somehow from. The from, yeah. from the He's got a mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone's just like randomly. There's like like kind of like those random acts of kindness where people are just blue teething me like memes as I walk past them. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> exactly, <yeah. laughs> oh gosh! So uh, and where do people find you then if, uh, to to stay up to date with whatever does come up in the future? Yeah, Mason J Taylor on Instagram is a place, and um, you can go over to masonjtaylor.com. The website looks like shit right now. It doesn't look like shit. It's just like has been updated in seven years which i'm currently working on so but you can yeah. jump on the newsletter there i'm gonna do more things there but yeah superfeast.com.au or .com if you're in the northern hem okay like you can get lots of info and if you want to if you want to if you want to follow the dow or learn the dow it's over at superfeast where that'll be happening mm -hmm. cool and what about the pod yeah superfeast podcast yeah available on all reputable you know platforms whatever you know <laughs> it's yeah. like it's got yeah that's that, that's often often some pretty fun deep dives yeah into more esoteric um or to more niche health um areas yeah, yeah. it's There's fun like what 100 plus episodes in there yeah oh. no, i think we're like yeah 150 maybe or something so like a good, that a good uh resource there for anyone that wants to learn more about all of this topics we've been covering today yeah and, not, more. Cover and more and more yes <laughs> it is actually practical i mean you've got yeah. practical intentions around you know when you want to interact with herbology and herbalism and the tonic herbalism you know if it's just, if, even if you are in a place it's just like look i'm just getting a little bit more sick than i would like yeah. to or i'm just like i'm exhausted a little bit more than i'd like to there is very practical solutions there okay, for awesome. you as well nice well we all need to be in good health don't we just? Yes. So uh, thank you so much for coming on the pod. Yeah, Thanks, guys. Super great. fun. Yeah, it's great. Fantastic to uh, to meet and yeah, have this, this wild conversation. Sure, yeah, it won't gosh. be the last. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, just to wrap it up then, please uh, make sure if you feel the, uh, the call to subscribe, that's the thing to do to stay up to date with all the design on purpose stuff. Uh, you can follow our, our channel on, uh, on Instagram design on purpose, TikTok design on purpose. What else? Telegram. Telegram at so Workplace we got four, Studio. Four subscribers four, of Telegram. It's a bit of an echo chamber. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's just me and Tom. <laughs> a couple others. And then, uh, and if you want to check out our, um, our design agency, Workplace Studio, uh, Workplace Studio.com. That's where we'll be. So, uh, Stay tuned for another episode and thanks, Mason. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you.